Well, hello, and today's video is going to be about walking poles. Once again, I get asked quite a lot of questions and queries on the YouTube channel and also social, just various aspects about you know why I use walking poles, which ones I can recommend, where they come in useful, just lots of different queries about it. So I, I thought I'd do a wee video on my walking poles. And I must say, years and years ago, when I've been using poles probably, oh I don't know, going back 20 years, pretty much from the start, because, mainly because I've got bad knees. Um, I've had both my knees operated on uh, in the early 20s. I had a minuscule tear, I think it was a bucket handle tear in my left knee. And then more recently I had, uh, I had my right knee done. There's, I've got something called OCD, which means there's not much cartilage left on my femoral condyle. So they've come in handy and they do help. Um, I think there's short-term benefits just for their usefulness out in the walk and also long-term benefits if they're used properly to yeah, help protect your, your joints and your knees and what have you. So what have I got? I'm not going to really go into manufacturers or you know which is better than others because there's so many different types of walking poles out there. But the ones that I do have and I use most often, which you'll see in most of my videos, are these ones here. So let me just get these. There we go. And these, oh, they're getting on a bit now. Uh, these are called Fizan, or Fizan, don't know how you pronounce it, uh, Everest. And I had a pair of just cheap, cheap walking poles for many years, and I was a great believer that a pole's a pole, and why would you need to sort of splash out and spend a lot of money on them? But I'll go, I'll go into why I ended up doing that. The main reason was uh, Jerry bought a pair of these, and when he gave me a shot, oh my god, the difference was unbelievable. I've actually still got my old walking poles hanging up in the, the gear room just over there, uh, which I, sometimes if I'm going out with people that aren't into walking and don't have walking poles, I'll lend them those, but I've got these Fizan ones and they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, I must say I love them. Uh, I've just actually ordered some replacement carbide tips for them because this, I don't know if you'll see that, if I bring up the camera there, that's all worn. So I've got new tips for them. You can get sort of spare parts for these. The other, the other type of walking pole that I've got, I use for climbing, and it's one well, not like, like this. It's a bit like your tent poles. Uh, so it uh, it kind of expands, and you pull it out, and it straightens out, and it it actually compacts down to. It's a good you know, ten centimeters shorter than the Fizans, and the reason I use these when I go climbing is they compact down so they're not sticking out of the bag. If you're climbing or scrambling, it can get caught on the rocks. Um, so you can actually pack these down and I often put them actually inside the bag so it reduces the uh, <laughs> likelihood of them becoming caught on a rock when you're climbing, which can be a bit of a pain. I've actually broken one of these brokes. I need to get a new set um, of these more compact poles at some point. So, uh, anyway, <coughs> so I'll talk a wee bit about why I use the poles. I've kind of touched on it already for my knees and my joints, um, but also there's there's lots of benefits when you're out in the on the hill. If you're going up or downhill, I think it helps both. It helps me the impact when I'm going downhill, but also when I'm going uphill, it helps spread the the load. Um, I just find it really, really useful. They come in handy. There's not many walks you'll see me on without my walking poles. They also come in handy for things like river crossings. You'll have seen. Oh, I had to cross a fairly substantial river a few months ago and they came in handy. It's just so slippy when you're on your rocks. Having the poles as extra balance points really helps. Uh, when I was snowshoeing as well uh, a few months ago, they were fantastic. They, uh, they come with uh, snow buckets, wider buckets at the bottom. These are just the normal ones, but you can get wider ones which fit on, which is fantastic. And also just on rough ground, if you're off the path or even on the paths, very rarely in the mountains are the paths super level. Um, they, just, they just give you a wee bit of confidence. I think there'd be so many times where I would have fallen on my backside without these poles. They've saved me many times. And I also use them, the last thing that I'd say I use them for is when I'm wild camping with my scarp tent, I use these to um, tighten some of the guy lines to get the outer fly away from the inner fly, which, uh, which is quite useful, especially when it's a bit windy and what have you. 
How do I use them? I get asked a lot, a lot of questions of why do you hold the, the poles halfway there, you don't hold them at the handle. So I, the reason for that is when I use these poles, the way I use them is I tend to extend them as long as they can go. I, I am, how tall am I? About six foot one. And when you're coming downhill, I find it's a lot better to have them at their extended length, the most long that they go basically because you're going downhill and they need to be a bit longer. Um, but I tend to start off with them at that length and then when I'm going uphill, where a lot of people would have them shorter, I just hold the handle further down so it saves me having to stop and change the lengths and a bit of faffing about and what have you. It's really much more, well I find it personally, these are all my personal opinions, easier just to have them at the longest length and then just move my hand up and down the pole depending on where I am, the terrain I'm on, if I'm, you know, if I'm traversing round the, the side of a hill and the higher side of the hills to my right, I'll have, I'll hold the pole low down on my right hand and the left one's near the top of the pole. And it just, it's just an easier way that I find to use the poles. Um, when I'm walking along the flat and it's not too rocky, so if I'm on the, on the approach to the hills or coming back from the hills, I tend just to carry them. I find the walking rhythms easier. <laughs> Uh, without uh, without the poles in my hands, uh, well not without them in my hands, but without actually using them uh, on flat ground, I just tend to, to hold them. Um, you'll read a lot about, or uh, if you look into walking poles, they suggest that you should you should use them in an alternating uh, alternative fashion. So if your left pole is out front, that sort of coincides with your right foot, so you're kind of alternating, which is fine. I sometimes do that. I don't have a rigid. <laughs> method of using the poles in my head, I tend to find more often than not, especially on steeper ground, I tend to plant both poles and use them to help me pull me, pull me up the uh, <laughs> up the hill, especially if I'm wild camping or I've got a lot of heavy gear on. Um, that, that's another reason they're really good is uh, if you're carrying a lot of heavy gear. Um, so I just I just find, I tend to use them as I find them comfortable. I, I th I, I'm a great believer in just find out what's best for you and go with it, uh, as long as you're, fight, you're, you're feeling the benefit, there's no sure and fast way to, to use them. Uh, one thing that I don't do is I don't tend to use the wrist loops. Um, I, f I think it's, you can get a bit of benefit from using the wrist loops, but the reason I don't is if you slip or you fall and your pole gets caught as you fall, you're still attached to it and it could end up, I don't know, dislocating a shoulder or, or causing you some damage and I'm a bit wary of that, wary of that, so I never tend to use these. I know I know certain people that actually cut the wrist loops off so they're not there and y you can't have that temptation to put your hand through them, but that's, as I said, that's just my personal opinion. I, when I have used them before, I, I thought this is quite good, you can, you can get a bit of benefit from them, but the, I don't know, the risk of them causing some damage when you fall, for me personally, outweighs the benefit of using them. So, Sorry, I've got a wee script here, <laughs> which I'm referring to. Um, what else have I said here? Yeah, most of that stuff I've, I've gone through. Um, what do I like about them? So just yeah, just to finish off, what do I like about poles? If I was going to buy another set of poles, what would I, I I'd go for? I'd, I'd look for a company that sells the spare parts. I've actually bought two pairs of these Fizans because eventually the middle section cracked on one and um, I couldn't get the, there's wee extenders inside which when you uh, tighten or loosen they expand out, I'd replaced those a few times and eventually it was actually the pole that broke so I bought some more, I don't know if you can get these ones anymore to be honest with you but irrespective, whatever make you go for I'd make sure you get some spare parts and as I said I've just ordered some new car uh, tips for them because these can get blunt over time depending on how often you use them and on what terrain you use them on. Different types of uh, locking mechanisms, these are just the, the screw uh, tightening mechanism. You can get ones with, with clips, in fact these ones have got the clip mechanism there. You can see that clips open, clips shut. To be honest with you, before I got the Fizans I was much more of an advocate of the clipping mechanisms but to be honest with you, if you look after them correctly these twisty locks have been absolutely fine. The only time I had an issue with the twisty lock was I, whenever I came home from a, a walk, whether it was wet or dry, whatever the weather, I just put these poles, throw them in this, in the cupboard. And when I went back to Fizam and I had an issue with the, the system not locking correctly, they, they, I sent it back to them, they were great actually, and they replaced the section that was broken. 
and they told me that it actually corroded and you're meant to store these, I've mentioned this in a video before, but you're meant to store these apart and what, what I always do is I take them to bits and I, hold, I hang the handles up in my gear room so they're hanging down so any moisture drips down the way and the same with the middle section which is also hollow, the, the hollow end I have down the way so if there's any moisture in there it drains out and it dries um, because if you don't it'll rust and corrode and that's what causes the issues with these but they've been great pools and you can see they've been well used uh, they've been fantastic the other thing I like is you can probably see here the grip goes all the way down or well, quite far down the handle and that's just going back to the way that I use them I like to hold them further down to save me having to fart around <laughs> changing the length of them and what have you they're really lightweight uh, these ones I, I don't actually know what they're made of I know you can get different materials um, and what have you. you can get different types of handle you can get cork ones as well but for me it's really just the the grip coming down the handle really uh, really important and you can also get different types of baskets for the end of them like for snow baskets I, these are the, the the usual ones but if it's snow outside and what have you i'll put the bigger snow baskets on there which is great so yeah that is really about about the walking pools i hope that's been useful as I said, these are just my own opinions. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of different types of walking pool out there. Uh, I find them really useful. Uh, when I started off, they weren't the cool thing. <laughs> you were deemed to be really uncool if you had walking pools, but as I said, because of my dodgy knees, I've been using them for years. And I think I've found over the years that more and more people, even young people, <laughs> are using them. They don't seem to be that uh, as untrendy as they were maybe 20 years ago. Uh, so anyway, that is about it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next adventure.